and welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and these are 10 Unfinity cards that you are likely going to see in the Commander format. So we've had this whole set spoiled already. So I thought I would go through and pull out the 10 cards that I think are probably going to see play in the Commander format or the ones that I think are the best fits in the Commander format. Of course, as we probably all know by now, this is a black bordered set. There are lots of cards that are legal in the Commander format. In fact, there's probably a lot more than what people think. By my count, there is 103 cards from Unfinity that are legal in the commander format that's probably a lot more than people thought there was going to be and 11 of those are commanders and again there's a lot of misconceptions here another reason why i don't like all of this there's so many people that don't understand exactly how this works i just had a guy comment on my last infinity video that said the sticker cards are not going to be legal in the commander format because they don't have that hologram at the bottom no that is not the case the cards that have no hologram on the bottom at all are also going to be legal in the commander format. The only ones that are not legal in the commander format are the ones with the acorn sticker. That's how you know what's legal in the commander format and what's not. If it has that acorn hologram, it is not legal in the commander format. Everything else is. So yes, the sticker commanders and those attractions, that stuff, a lot of that is legal in the commander format. There's going to be a lot of stuff that people don't like about this set. As I talked about in my last video about how I'm not a big fan of the attraction thing and I'm really not a big fan of the sticker thing again more misconceptions where a lot of people commented on that video and said what's the big deal with stickers you can just replace them with counters i don't know about all that i mean i saw cards in here that are specifically referring to name stickers or art stickers so i'm not sure exactly how you're going to replace that with just a counter i think you are actually supposed to use the stickers apparently with the attractions you have to have a separate attraction deck that you are using when you play an attraction commander so there's quite a bit going on there and for all of that reason i I am not including any of the sticker or attraction stuff in this list. Yes, they will probably see play in the format. However, because there is that stipulation there, they're definitely not going to see as much play. A huge portion of this set is either dealing with attractions or stickers or dice rolling. In fact, there's very few cards that I could find. There's a few on this list that didn't deal with any of those three things, but I did find a few that are pretty good, I think. So we're going to start out at number 10 with Attempted Murder. And this this is one of the most clever names that have come from this set. Again, I'm a really big fan of reading these cards. I think the names are incredibly clever. Usually they're a play on words. Paradise Lost is another one that gets my vote for the most clever name from the set. Attempted Murder is X Black Black Sorcery. Choose target creature. Roll X six-sided dice for each even result. Put two minus one minus one counters on that creature. For each odd result, create a one two blue bird creature token with flying named Storm Crow. So the reason why this is so clever is because of the name, right? For those who don't know, a group of crows is called a murder of crows. So that's why this name is so clever because you're sort of attempting to kill a creature and you're also attempting to make a group of birds. So very clever name. And this is a card that you sort of have to play out a little bit in your head with regards to what the X is going to be and what you could possibly get from this. I will compare this to Pest Infestation a little bit. You know, it's a card where as a removal spell, not great but as a token creation spell, maybe a little bit better. So if X is two, this is not going to be very good, I don't think, because maybe you'll get one odd result, one even result, which means you're going to put two minus one minus one counters on a creature. That's okay. And then create one bird token. You know, for four mana, that's not great. I think you want to have a bigger X here. So if X is four, you're paying six mana. That's kind of a lot. And again, if we divide it evenly so that you have even and odd results, let's say we have two odd results and two even results, you're going to put four minus one minus one counters on a creature which likely will kill it and then you're going to create two one two bird creature tokens not bad it's not fantastic but i think it could see play in the format coming in at number nine bamboozling beeble one blue mana beeble one one protection from robots not sure how relevant that is going to be but in this set of course there are robots pay one and tap the next time target player would roll one or more dice this turn instead they roll that many dice plus one and you choose one of those rolls 
rules to ignore. So I thought this card definitely needed to have a mention because this is a pretty darn good ability. So if you're in any deck that is rolling dice or even if your opponents are in a deck that is rolling dice, this card can be really good because of course this is target player. You can use it on your opponents and you can use it on yourself. It is very similar to a Quark's Thumb where you're getting that extra coin flip and in this case of course you can get an extra dice roll. You're using it on yourself. You can roll an extra dice and then you just of course pick the one that you want. You ignore the lower roll I guess if you probably want a higher roll here. Again though if you're using like the attempted murder maybe it's not necessarily a high roll or a low roll. It's odd or even. So whichever one you want but also you can use it on your opponent. So if your opponent rolls a dice let's say they have a dice rolling commander and they're rolling like a d20. Now you can force them to roll two d20s and you probably in that case want them to have a lower roll so you will get rid of the higher roll right you get to choose you're going to choose the higher roll to ignore so they're stuck using the lower roll so this actually can be pretty darn good against a dice rolling deck as well Coming in at number eight, clowning around. One and a white sorcery. Create two one one white clown robot artifact creature tokens. Then roll a six sided die. If the result is equal to or less than the number of robots you control, create a one one white clown robot artifact creature token. So again, this is not a card that's fantastic. I think it's a pretty decent token creator. So two mana to create two tokens, which is what this is always going to do. It's always going to create at least two tokens is decent. That's sort of the norm, but you have the opportunity to create three tokens with this. So two mana to create Rate three one one tokens is a really good rate. You want to play this in a deck where you're going to have lots of robots. That's probably not going to be the case, but even if you just create the two robots with this card, then you roll a six sided die. The result has to be equal to or less than the number of robots you control, which is two. So if you roll a two or a one, you're going to create another one one robot, which is pretty good. You know, it gives you the opportunity to create three one one tokens with this card. And for two mana, that's a pretty good token creator. Coming in at number seven, slight malfunction. One in a red sorcery. Choose one, destroy target artifact, or roll a six-sided die. When you do, slight malfunction deals one damage to each of up to X target creatures where X is the result. Again, we got a lot of dice rolling thing here because there is so much dice rolling in this set. If you get away from the attractions and the stickers, it is really difficult to find any card that isn't rolling dice. There's a lot of it going on. So if you got one of those dice rolling commanders out there, and there are a few already that are legal in the commander format, any of these dice rolling cards work extra good if you're already in that strategy. So two mana, sorcery speed, destroying artifact, not great. Not very good at all, but you do have that other option, which is kind of nice. I think this is a card that could see play in the format. I mean, obviously destroying an artifact is always going to be an opportunity in a commander game, but you might get into that situation where your opponent has a bunch of 1-1 one, one creatures, right? Because this card is going to deal damage to a bunch of different targets, but it's only going to deal one damage. You can't do more than that. So if I roll my six-sided dice and I roll a one, I'm going to deal one damage to one target. Not fantastic, again, for two mana. However, I could end up rolling a six here, and now I'm doing one damage to six different targets. So if my opponent has a bunch of 1-1 one, one saplings out or something like that, I could end up knocking off six of their creatures for two mana pretty darn good i think this is a card that could definitely see some play coming in at number six strength testing hammer one mana artifact equipment when equipped creature attacks roll a six-sided die that creature gets plus x plus o until end of turn where x is the result then if it has the greatest power or tied for the greatest power among creatures on the battlefield draw a card and has equip three so i think this is a pretty darn decent equipment even in just any old Voltron deck, I mean, it only costs one. A lot of those equipment and Voltron decks have a lot of cheating equip costs as well. If you just ignore the dice rolling part here, whenever you attack with your Voltron commander, say for example, you're just going to get the draw card because your Voltron commander probably already has the greatest power of any creature on the battlefield, right? So if you're planning on having a really big creature, maybe your commander just has a big power and you're going to be attacking with it all the time. Every time you do, you get to draw a card. That seems like pretty good value. And then on top of that roll a dice and your commander might get plus one plus O, oh, or it might get plus six plus O. Oh, pretty darn good i think this is definitely a card that could fit in some decks for sure coming in at number five is our first commander on the list captain rex nebula one red and a white human pilot employee two two at the beginning of combat on your turn target non-land permanent you control becomes a vehicle artifact until end of turn its base power and toughness are each equal to its mana value it has crew two and craft 
crash land when this vehicle deals damage roll a six-sided die if the result is equal to this vehicle's mana value it deals that much damage to any target then sacrifice this vehicle that is a whole lot of words and there's a lot going on there it's pretty confusing this actually can be a very interesting commander and the reason why it can be super interesting is because you're turning any non-land permanent you control into a vehicle artifact until end of turn and for that reason alone i think there's a lot you can do here right just think you got an enchantment sitting on the battlefield that's a non-land permanent you can turn that enchantment into an artifact vehicle until end of turn its base power and toughness is going to be equal to its mana value it has crew two which of course means you can crew it with your commander you swing with it if it deals damage you roll a six-sided dice if the result is equal to this vehicle's mana value it deals that much damage to any target then you sacrifice it so sort of an upside downside situation if i attack with a non-land permanent that i've turned into a vehicle that has a mana value higher than six obviously that's not a possibility so i'm not going to have to worry about sacrificing it because i can't possibly roll a result equal to its mana value you also might want to though right that's the way you might want to build this deck where i want to be throwing that damage around i mean that seems pretty good you could even do a little bit of a sacrifice theme i think the really interesting thing here is this says non-land permanent which means you can do it on a creature right i can take my solemn simulacrum for example turn that into a vehicle artifact until end of turn that has base power and toughness each equal to its mana value now of course this is not in addition to its other types that's an important wording there right you're turning it into a vehicle not in addition to its other types so that means it ceases to be a creature so now my solemn simulacrum is just an artifact vehicle and its power and toughness is no longer a 2-2 it's now a 4-4 because that's what its mana value is right and then i crew it with my commander i get in for damage with it and if i roll a four on that six-sided dice i will now sacrifice it and then of course because it's going to the graveyard it's dying i get to draw a card off of it as well things can get a little confusing here i'm sure there's going to be a lot of ruling on this because again turning stuff into vehicles can get into some very interesting situations i'm sure there's a lot of neat things you could probably do with this guy i think it's going to be an interesting commander to build around. Coming in at number four, Starlight Spectacular. Two white, white enchantment. Has parade at the beginning of combat on your turn. Choose creatures you control one at a time until each creature you control has been chosen. Each of those creatures get plus one, plus one until end of turn for each creature chosen before it. So we finally got into our first card that doesn't have any dice rolling on it again. There only is, I think, like four or five cards in this entire set that don't have anything to do with attractions stickers or dice rolling there's not a lot this is one of them and this is actually a pretty darn good card if you plan on attacking a lot right so at the beginning of combat on your turn let's say you have four creatures in play you're going to choose those creatures one at a time and they're each going to get plus one plus one until end of turn for each creature chosen before it so in other words the first creature i choose there's no creatures chosen before it, so it's not going to get a plus at all. So you're going to pick that creature that maybe you don't want to be attacking with as your first creature. The next creature is going to get plus one, plus one. The next creature is going to get plus two, plus two. And the last creature is going to get plus three, plus three. Now, of course, you don't have to attack with them all. I mean, let's use Kadira as an example here. I just talked about this in my Commanders I Was Wrong About video. This is a fantastic fit in that deck because this card works particularly well in a go wide and also go tall strategy where... I have a lot of creatures in play, but I also have a commander maybe that I want to be attacking with, right? So if I have a couple of those rabbit tokens in play, let's say I've got three of them. Now I choose my rabbit tokens for the first three choices. And then my commander being the last choice is going to get plus one, plus one for each choice before it. So it's going to get plus three, plus three. So now my commander is a six, six trample. That seems pretty darn good, right? Fantastic include in that deck. But of course I can just attack with all my creatures. It's just very interesting where you're, it's sort of a divided anthem where I'm choosing the creatures some of them maybe a little bit bigger some of them a lot bigger very interesting card I think this card is for sure going to see play in the format coming in at number three is our second commander and the only other commander that I think is probably going to see a lot of play in the format this is probably I assume going to be the most popular commander from this set Magar of the Magic Strings one a red and a black Minotaur Performer three three pay one black and a red note the name of target instant or sorcery card in your graveyard put it onto the battle 
battlefield face down. It's a 3-3 creature with whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, you may create a copy of the card with the noted name. You may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. And if this creature would leave the battlefield exile instead of putting it anywhere else. So I've already talked about this guy because this was spoiled quite a while ago. This is a pretty powerful ability. Again, for me, if you get away from the silly name and the silly picture and all that, this feels like a very just normal commander that you could see in maybe any commander set. It's a very powerful ability. If I have, say, a Rise of the Dark Realms in my graveyard, this doesn't care about the mana value of that card at all. You're just picking any instant or sorcery card from your graveyard. So obviously a lot of looting is going to be great in this deck. I'm going to choose my Rise of the Dark Realms. I'm going to pay the three mana. It now becomes a 3-3 creature on the battlefield. And if I can get in for damage with it, I will now be creating a copy of that spell, right? The original Rise of the Dark Realms is still a face down 3-3 creature. So that's going to stay there. I'm just creating a copy that's going to directly go onto the stack and I'm going to be casting it without paying its mana cost, of course, which is fantastic. So I can keep doing Rise of the Dark Realms over and over again or whatever spell you want to, right? Even if I just want to do a Knight's Whisper and just draw two cards over and over again every turn, obviously getting in for damage is going to be super important here. I think this is going to be the most popular commander from the set for sure. And the top two cards on this list are definitely going to be popular cards in the format. Exchange of Words coming in at number two. One blue blue enchantment. When Exchange of Words enters the battlefield, choose two target creatures. For as long as Exchange of Words remains on the battlefield, exchange the text boxes of those creatures. This is a really powerful effect. I sort of likened to it when I talked about it before to a clone effect a little bit, but also more of a steal effect, right? You're basically stealing your opponent's creatures, but you're stealing its abilities and instead of just straight up stealing the creature. That's probably where this is going to be used the most. You could literally put this in any deck and at any point, if your opponent plays an Elishnorn or if your opponent plays an Avacyn or if your opponent plays a Vorinclex or any of those really big, powerful creatures and you want those abilities for yourself, you just play this guy and I turn my Spellseeker, you know, instead of just being a vanilla 1-1 on the battlefield, it is now a Vorinclex, right? Or something like that. And then of course, the added bonus is my opponent no longer gets those abilities, right? My opponent's stuff is no longer indestructible because I've stolen those abilities from my opponent and now I get them. They get my spell seeker's ability, but of course, because it's an ETB, that's not going to do anything. This really is a fantastic card in a commander game and one that I think you could probably put in just about any deck. Probably going to be the most popular card from the set in Commander, though, is Saw in Half. I went back and forth between this and Exchange of Words. Definitely the top two on this list are going to see a lot of play in the Commander format. They are going to be very much sought after. I'm a little concerned about the availability of these cards. And, you know, we might run into that situation where these cards are sort of hard to get your hands on. Obviously, that's why they did it. Putting a couple of very chase cards in an unset like this means that a lot of Commander players are going to run out and buy these cards. I'm not going to get into all of that. Nevertheless, Saw in Half is certainly going to see play in the format for sure. It is a very unique and powerful effect. So two in a black instant, destroy target creature. I mean, that's always something you want to be doing in a commander game. But more importantly, if that creature dies this way, its controller creates two tokens that are copies of that creature, except their base power is half that creature's power and base toughness is half that creature's toughness. Round up each time. So there is a lot of ways you can do this. It is a clone effect, essentially, in mono black, which is fantastic. So this fits very similarly into the situation I just talked about with exchange of words, except of course, not going to work with the legendary creatures here. I'm going to choose a creature that is giving me some big effect, and then I'm going to split it in half so that I get double the effect off of it. I don't care about the power and toughness here. It's just a creature that has a really great static ability that I can get double the static ability off of. Any ETB will work great here as well, right? People have talked about Gray Merchant a lot where this is a great fit. I'm going to saw my Gray Merchant in half. It's going to create two token copies of it. Both of them are going to see each other enter the battlefield and I'm going to get both those ETB effects and drain my opponents for a ton of life. And don't forget, you're also creating tokens here. So this is also going to work great with Parallel Lives or Anointed Procession or any of those effects to get even more value out of it, right? So really, really great card in the Commander format. Obviously, it's an instant as well, which makes it even better. There's a lot of ways to use this card. It is certainly going to see a ton of play in the Commander format and is going to be a chase card from this set. But that is it. That is 10 cards that I think are going to see play in the Commander format from Infinity and probably a lot more as well. These are just the 10 that I picked out that I think are pretty darn good cards in the commander format. 
A lot of controversy with this set, obviously. Um, you know, I don't like the animosity they are creating. The video that I made last week sort of proves my point about this, where I just talked about some cards and I talked about how I didn't like the attractions and I don't like the stickers. And a lot of people are like, oh, this just sounds like you're complaining. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm complaining about things I don't like. That's what people do, right? When you see something you don't like, you say, I don't like this. If you say you don't like hardcore stacks in a casual commander game, is my response going to be, oh, you're just complaining. No, people like what they like and they don't like what they don't like. That's just the way it is. And as I talked about in that Unfinity video, we all are going to draw the line somewhere. You know, there are certain things that you will put up with. How much will you put up with, right? Are people going to be okay with all of these silver bordered cards being legal in the commander format? I think a lot of people would draw the line at that and they would not be okay with it. Some people would. We all have our line. That's what I talked about in that video where we don't want to see certain things in a casual commander game, whether it be something that is really competitive or something that is really super goofy and maybe over the line for us. We all got to make our choice here. I don't love the animosity that this has created where now we just have a bunch of casual commander players that are going to be fighting and arguing with each other about whether or not they want to see certain things in a casual commander game. I really don't like that they did that. That is the part that bothers me most about this set. Nevertheless, here it is and we are going to have to deal with it and there actually is some cards that even I might consider playing in some of my commander decks because they are pretty good. What do you guys think? What are your favorite cards from this set? Are you going to be playing cards from this set in your casual commander decks? Let me know in the comments below, but that is it for today and thanks for tuning in.